Hello students, today we are discussing about important disorder that occurs normally in the childhood. We have seen number of disorders like pervasive developmental disorders or autism spectrum disorders, Rett syndrome and other things. But today it is as important as the other disorders that is about the childhood disintegrative disorder which we are focusing about. This childhood in disintegrative disorder is also called as Heller syndrome or disintegrative psychosis or dementia infantilis. It is a very rare condition that occurs in the childhood and we can see that this disorder occurs only after 2 years of age. Until then the development of the child is as effective as like any other child. But once this disorder is experienced by the child there will be a severe loss of social skills, communicative skills and motor skills. Today's session let us focus about what are the symptoms of this disorder, what are the causes, how we can diagnose this disorder and what is what are the treatment and preventive measures related to this disorder. In fact, if we have to speak about this childhood integrative disorder, though it has been prevalent very long time back but still it is officially recognized only in the recent years. But otherwise it is as old as autism disorder. In fact it is much earlier also it is we are aware of it and it is prevalent. Childhood disintegrative disorder sometimes considered as part of a larger spectrum that is autism spectrum disorder. However, unlike autism a child with this kind of a disorder that is childhood disintegrative disorder experiences severe regression in certain areas of development after the child has shown a proper development in important areas of the development that is social communication and the motor development. Thomas Heller an Austrian educator is credited in describing and also in identifying this kind of a childhood disintegrative disorder in 1908. It is a very complex disorder that affects many different areas of the child's development. Initially childhood disintegrative disorder was considered to be one of the medical disorders and they felt like there are number of medical causes for the occurrence of this. However, after researching on various aspects of the childhood disintegrative disorder cases, it was found that no severe or no one single medical cause is related to the occurrence of this disorder. For that reason, childhood disintegrative disorder was included in DSM 4 TR. Once we have understood what is this childhood disintegrative disorder, let us focus on clinical picture of this disorder. If a child is affected with this disorder, what are the symptoms that we are going to see in this child? Both DSM-4 and also ICD-10 listed out certain common symptoms which are normally seen in the child affected with this disorder. Children with childhood disintegrative disorder typically shows a dramatic loss of previously acquired skills at least in two areas of development. One is it could be language that is by two years of age the child has developed or shown some improvement in the development of the language whether it is understanding when other people are speaking or whether it is communication from the child's side. But a child who has learned to speak at least two to three words or phrases gradually loses this ability to communicate using these words or sometimes may break up or use the words in fragments. That means a child who has initially comfortable with using the language now starts diminishing this kind of an ability. Another area where the child could lose the acquired skills is about social skills. We know that social skills play an important role in the development of the child. But unfortunately the child 
who is affected with this disorder fails to relate to the people around and the child cannot communicate or interact with the people. For example, a child who was able to previously interact or respond to a social behaviors or emotional behaviors like hugging now tries to be away from it or shows the temper tantrums when the mother or any other significant person tries to relate to the child with a warm hugging. And the moment the child is taken into the hands, we feel like it is difficult to console the child because the child is not feeling comfortable with the interaction or the physical intimacy of the person. And the child tries to be away from the human tactile, that is human touch. Another significant area where the child can lose the ability is play. We all know that children will be loving to play. But once the child is affected with childhood integrative disorder, the child loses the interest in imaginary play and also in a variety of games and activities. Motor skills is another area where we see the loss of ability in the child. Earlier, the child was showing an improvement in the motor skills and has acquired the ability to walk, to grasp the objects and perform other movements. For example, a child who was able to pedal a bicycle or draw shapes can no longer do these activities if the child is affected with this disorder. Another significant area is bowel or bladder control. The child who was improved in the toilet training activities now suddenly shows the loss of interest or loss of control over the bladder movements. And most often we see the children who is affected with this disorder beginning to soil themselves during the day and also in the night. Apart from these symptoms, we also see decline in the cognitive abilities of the child. Sometimes we also see additional symptoms like onset of difficulty in transition from sleeping to waking state. And social interactions, as we have already discussed, have to be compromised because the child is showing temper tantrums, becomes aggressive and also tends to withdraw from peers because the child is not showing any interest in the presence of the people or the peers. All these things will also lead to the limitation of the motor abilities. Apart from these changes or apart from these symptoms, we can also see the poor coordination and possible awkwardness of gait in the children affected with this disorder. Sometimes, like in autism cases, we also see the restricted, repetitive and stereotyped pattern of the movements among the children affected with this childhood disintegrative disorder. Sometimes, the period of acute regression may be characterized by high levels of anxiety and usually lasts for several months. Sometimes that leads to intellectual disabilities like the clinical picture may be similar to the, of the children who are experiencing or who are affected with autism. But of course, the history may not be the same like how the autistic child or the reasons for the autism may not be the same in the case of the childhood integrative disorder. How this disorder develops? Let us look at the course of the disorder and also about the diagnosis. How we can diagnose the children affected with this? Is it easy or should we go only for the professional help even in identifying this kind of a disorder? If we have to speak about the course of the disorder, the loss of skills may be gradual and sometimes that may continue over a period of 6 to 9 months. The transition sometimes may be unexplained with high levels of anxiety, unprovoked anger or agitation. Sometimes we also see the behavioral changes followed by loss of communication, social skills and motor skills. Children may stop speaking or may restrict themselves to using only one or two words. 
they often lose the bladder control and withdraw themselves rejecting social interaction with adults or also with children. They may perform repetitive activities and they have the trouble moving from one activity to the next. When we look at these changes in the children once they are affected with this disorder, it looks like the symptoms are similar like in autism. But however, in autism, previously acquired skills are not generally lost. It is found that virtually all children with childhood disintegrative disorder lose speech and social skills. About 90 percent of the children affected with this disorder lose self-help skills, that is the ability to feed, wash and toilet themselves. And about the same number also develop non-specific overactivity. After a time, once the regression stops, the children do not usually regain the skills that were lost. Once lost, the skills are forever lost. It is very difficult to retrain them in the lost skills. Now, how to diagnose whether a child is affected with this kind of a disorder or was there any normal obstacles which occurred because of the other reasons? Generally, childhood disintegrative disorder is most commonly diagnosed when the parents of the affected child consult the pediatrician about the child's loss of previously acquired skills. The doctor will first give the child a medical examination to rule out the presence of any general medical condition or about the epilepsy. The child's head may also be x-rayed to find out whether there is any head trauma or brain injury or a brain tumor. Following the medical examinations and tests, the child will be sent to a psychiatrist who specializes in treating these children with these disorders. Then the psychiatrist will make a differential diagnosis of childhood disintegrative disorder. To be diagnosed, as we have already discussed, the child must show a regression or loss of ability in at least two of the following areas. These are receptive language skills, that is difficulty in understanding the language spoken by the others. The other is expressive language skills, that is the child has difficulty in speaking the language. Social or self-help skills, this is another area where the child may have the problem. Playing with peers, which is severely impaired. Motor skills, which the child has lost the ability. Bower or bladder control, already if this ability has been established in the children. Children with childhood disintegrative disorder also have the difficulty to converse with others, not only using the language, but also using the non-verbal skills like using smile or gestures or nodding the head or any other kind of the non-verbal movements. They also lose interest in playing games and developing relationships with others. They may engage in strange repetitive behaviors like bobbing the head up and down or other repeated movements. These changes must not be caused by any general medical condition or another diagnosed medical condition. So once it is ruled out, the child is not affected with any other medical problem or the child is not suffering with any other kind of a disorder, but still if these symptoms are present, only then the child will be diagnosed as affected with this kind of a childhood disintegrative disorder. However, the psychiatrist will also take the caution that the child has to be differentiated in a different way, that is the child is not suffering with any kind of a autism or the child is not affected with any other kind of a pervasive developmental disorders like Rett's disorder because sometimes all these disorders somewhere show the similarities in certain symptoms though actually not. This disorder must also be differentiated from schizophrenia. Whatever symptoms the child is showing we have to see that the child has no childhood schizophrenia symptoms. 
parents reports of the child's behavior the records of the baby's books and medical records kept by the child's pediatrician and home movies with regard to the child's behavior help us in diagnosing the child when actually the child started losing these abilities or any other specific reasons involved in losing these kind of the abilities all of them will help us in diagnosing the child whether the child has affected with the disorder or whether there is any other developmental problem in the child what could be the causes for the development of this disorder if we know the causes naturally the treatment and also the preventive measures can be well formulated like in most of the cases even in this case there is no one specific cause which is found for the occurrence of this disorder the etiology is still unknown but still a bit of research indicates one of the reasons for the development of this disorder is brain pathology the eeg of the children affected with this disorder also indicated the evidence that there might be some element of the brain pathology involved for the occurrence of this disorder childhood disintegrative disorders is also found to be sometimes associated with seizures this is another indication that there is psychopathology of the brain that is involved in the occurrence of this disorder sometimes this disorder is also found to be associated with other brain conditions like leukodystrophy and schilder's disease but no one disease like brain defect brain injury or brain tumor are found to be associated with this however research is not well advanced in finding out about this disorder because this disorder is a rare condition that is found among the children so we can say there is no single causative factor behind this disorder however whatever research that is available on this particular disorder it indicates the possibility of genetic susceptibility including abnormal autoimmunity and prenatal or environmental stress which may be responsible for the psychopathology of the brain as the child has experienced developmental departure from normality the diminished preferential attention to the eyes of others has cascading detrimental effects decreasing further socialization the child's attention focusing on aspects like noises sounds lip motions are also indicating the impairment of appropriate social interaction that is mediated by the eye contact that is the child is giving more importance to the non verbal or objects rather than to the eye movements of the people some research also indicated environmental risk factors which may be behind the occurrence of this disorder these environmental risk factors may include viral exposure that is possible bacterial infections and also certain infections like rubella and herpes simplex which may be responsible for the development of this disorder apart from these viral infections toxin exposure prematurity and teratogenicity are also found to be the environmental risk factors for this disorder not only the environmental risk factors there are also genetic risk factors which are found to be associated with this disorder these risk factors include possible susceptibility to chromosomal breakage or disruption and family history of autism or asperger disorder these factors are found to be the risk factors among the children who may be vulnerable to this disorder research also found that certain disorders are associated with childhood disintegrative disorder these disorders include autoimmune disorders allergies especially like to food and 
which may lead to the gastrointestinal disorders and sometimes these are also found to be common among the children with autism. Another disorder associated with this childhood disintegrative disorder is insomnia. Childhood disintegrative disorder initially thought was common among both boys and girls, but later research indicated that this is more among the male rather than in the female. And childhood disintegrative disorder is perhaps 10 times less common than more strictly defined autism and it is estimated to occur in between 1 to 2 children per 100,000. No current studies are large enough to determine international frequency of this childhood disintegrative disorder. Childhood disintegrative disorder as we have already discussed occurs only after a period of at least 2 years of normal development and when the child is less than 10 years. Onset generally occurs in children aged 3 to 4 years and it may be abrupt. The average age diagnosis is 3.9 years comparable to that of autistic disorder where the average age is 3.1 years. No studies have shown that childhood disintegrative disorder is more common in a particular race or culture. The prognosis was also found to be very difficult because the disorder is very rare and so more data is needed about this particular disorder. Children with moderate to severe mental retardation or lack of communicative language have a worse prognosis than those with usual intelligence and communicative language. The disorder is lifelong and so the child has to experience the social communication and behavioral difficulties throughout the life. No mortality or morbidity is directly attributable to this kind of a disorder that is childhood disintegrative disorder. The clinicians alerted that when we are diagnosing the childhood disintegrative disorder, we should be alert to the presence of or possibility of LKS that is Londa-Kleffner syndrome. As we have already mentioned, the prognosis for childhood disintegrative disorder is very poor as this is a rare case among the children compared to the prognosis of children with autism. Once skills are lost, they are not usually regained. Only about 20 percent of the children diagnosed with this disorder could regain the lost skills. Most adults with childhood disintegrative disorder remain dependent on full-time caregivers and are also institutionalized. If we come to the treatment, to some extent treatment for childhood disintegrative disorder is similar to the treatment given to the autistic children. The emphasis is on early and intensive educational interventions. Most treatment is behavior based therapy and also educative. Educating the parents about this disorder and providing the information to create the awareness about the symptoms of the disorder and how to deal with these children is very important as it gives them some relief in dealing with the children affected with this disorder. Speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, social skills development and sensory integration therapy are equally important in treating the children with childhood disintegrative disorder. Generally, families with a child affected with childhood disintegrative disorder experience a lot of stress and much importance have to be given to the caregivers also in order to give them the support, not only the psychological support but also the social support and physical support is very much essential as focusing on these children 
is taxing. Sometimes trying to find out the providers who can provide the services for these children that is childhood disintegrative disorders is very difficult. So normally most of the organizations like parent organizations for autistic children would also try to provide the support services to the parents of the children with childhood disintegrative disorder. Support groups for families will help them to reduce the isolation and also the stress and the depression that they are undergoing in providing support to the children. However, as childhood disintegrative disorder is very rare, autism support groups and organizations include families of children with ch childhood disintegrative disorders in their services. Coming to the prevention, as the reasons for the child development of childhood disintegrative disorder is rare, the preventive measures are also difficult to plan. Probably if the further research has taken place on the causes of the disorder, the prevention measures can focus on these aspects. Until then, we only have to focus on the symptoms, on the early diagnosis of the child with this disorder and then provide an effective treatment using the above set therapies. That is behavior therapy, educative therapy for the parents, sensory integration therapy, language and speech therapy and after a particular age probably providing them the occupational therapy in order to rehabilitate them into the mainstream.